Hello and welcome to today's video on the three things to ask yourself when you're feeling unprepared to lead a group coaching session. I'm Darla Ledoux, founder of Source. This is a conversation that's been up in the field with our transformational leaders that we train in our certification program and even with some friends and private clients who have been talking about getting really nervous when they're going to lead something. And then on the other side, realizing, wow, that was amazing. I was really good. I was more ready than I thought I was. And I worried for nothing. I've been leading group programs for almost 15 years now. I've delivered so much of my work through retreats or group coaching. Even though I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I find that within the group, the dynamic really serves people in the way that I hold groups and the way we teach people to hold groups that are safe, honest, and transparent. And so in the group, it can feel though, like a little more nerve wracking even than one-on-one, -on -one, although this can come up in one-on-one -on -one as well. People get nervous. Am I going to be enough? Can I perform? And some of our clients, based on how their magic works, do structured curriculum in their groups, like they're showing up to teach something each time. Some of our clients don't have a structure like that. They're coming in and answering questions and having more of a mastermind format, working with whatever's alive in the space. And so whichever style is yours, this can still come up, these feelings of insecurity. So let me dive in. The first thing to ask yourself is, what's alive? What's alive? We talk a lot about following what's alive here at Sourced because Sourced energy is alive. We believe that you are connected energetically to your people in your group and really to the world at large, right? We're all connected. If you focus on what's alive for you in your own world, in your own space, like what's happening in your life, what transformation are you moving through or what topic is of interest to you? there's a very good chance that that is also alive for them. That said, one of the things we teach our certification clients is a really quick and simple method for tracking the people in the group. Where are they in what we what I call the anatomy of a transformation and what do they need next? So you might look to your own life at what's alive. And by the way, if you're getting nervous and it's you know half an hour before your class, probably go to your own life and trust that the energy is going to resonate for them. If you have a little more time, go through each person in your group and look at what's alive for them. Where are they and what do they most need next? And again, we have a framework we teach for that. The second question to ask yourself is this. What if I had more questions than answers today? We can think as the leader or the facilitator or the teacher in a group, that we should be teaching people the answers. But here's what I've found in 15 years leading retreats and coaching groups is that what makes a bigger lasting difference is to have people asking the right questions. So I've seen this time and time again, I've helped so many transformational leaders design the curriculum for their retreats. And one of the things that I saw when I was doing this is people felt like they had to share and this is the answer for this and this is the answer for this and this is the answer for this. Here's the thing, when we're teaching answers, people are coming in with resistance. They're going, do I agree? Do I disagree? When we're collectively answering a question, their resistance is down and they're leaning in and they're contributing to the conversation and they're trying it on for themselves. So what if I had more questions than answers? The way that I have come to think about hosting groups today as compared to when I started, when I had 182 PowerPoint slides for my first retreat, today the way I outline my curriculum is what conversations are we exploring? I put what is the actual question we're exploring rather than the answer I want to give people. And I'm telling you this is so much more effective and then you don't have to stress so much about figuring out what to teach. It's really, what is the question I most want to leave them with? And this makes me think of something I learned from a mentor a while ago. He called this the core premise. This was around developing a marketing campaign, and I still use this to this day. This question of, 
if someone engages with all of your marketing and they never buy, but they leave with an understanding of one thing, what would that be? And the understanding, it doesn't even have to be an answer, but like a, what is the right question? So for example, let's say um, I was doing a marketing campaign about retreats because I was doing Retreat and Grow Rich then. Perhaps the thing I would want to leave them with is the question of, what is really my ultimate intention for my retreat? Because once they answer that, the, the rest starts to fall into place. People are often asking the wrong questions when it comes to that and they don't actually know their intention. So if you're thinking more questions than answers, what's the right question for them to be asking themselves at the end of your group call and then build from there? This takes the pressure off of having to have the answer and it actually contributes more. Third question to ask yourself is what's needed for my magic to come alive? What's needed for my magic to come alive? Now, I teach a framework called the Sourced Magic. If you're in my community, you know that different magics have different environments that have them come alive. For example, if you are an expression magician, having everything outlined is going to actually shut you down. If you are a recognition magician, you need actually people to talk and tell you things so you can see the pattern to know what you want to teach. Now you can do this in advance. You don't have to do that live on a call, but knowing that makes a difference. Asking yourself what's needed for my magic to come alive is really, really great. And it ties from number two, because when, you know, I'm thinking of this conversation I had with a client about how she would always feel unprepared for sales meetings in her corporate work. And she would get really, really nervous before she went in and think she should have prepared more. But then as soon as she got there and her magic came alive, she didn't know this language, but she was able to see the client and what they needed and what was going. She was able to pick up things in the environment and things they said and recognize patterns and know what to recommend for this client based on her environmental scan that she was always doing automatically from her magic. When we don't know that we can trust our magic, we rely on our head to prepare something. But being prepared in your head, it like, might be great to help you get in the door, but it all might fall away as soon as your magic is actually reading the energy of the space. Okay, I want to give you a bonus question. This is a great question to ask in, in so many scenarios. But the bonus question is, have I been in a similar scenario before and how did it go? So let me tell you, I've hosted a hundred plus retreats at this point. And one of the things I noticed is early on, I would really, really stress about my content and my curriculum. I would feel like I needed to outline everything and give it to my team so they knew exactly what was going to happen so that I knew and was prepared and I could practice and plan and all of that. And so I would spend weeks stressing and procrastinating actually writing the outline for my retreat. And then a few days before, a lot of times once I traveled to the location and I got on site, it would just drop in. It's like I would become clear. So some of the things I had been thinking about would stay in the agenda, but a lot of it just came in last minute. Eventually, every time I would stress about my content, I would start to ask myself, okay, is this any different than it's been in the past? Have I been similarly unprepared before and lived? And when I could answer yes over and over and over again, I would relieve that stress. So just like the client with the sales meetings, she would remember that this is always how I feel before a sales meeting. <sighs> okay, it's fine. I'm going to be fine. So have you been similarly unprepared in the past and how did it go? And the more you ask yourself that and you study your unpreparedness, because that's just a judgment based on some idea that we should be perfectly prepared for everything all the time, right? Which actually shuts down our magic. As you start to study the way in which you tend to be unprepared, you'll start to notice this is actually how your magic comes to light. And then you'll stop trying to be like someone else and choose to be like yourself. This is Darla Ledoux, founder of Sourced. If this has been helpful, if you've heard someone talk about being nervous or unprepared to lead a group session, please share this video. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and share. 
I'm really wanting to exceed a thousand subscribers in my YouTube channel. If you're feeling moved, please support me in that. Thank you so much.